This is the plaintiff, Deborah Williams. She says she hired the defendant to cut down some trees in her yard, and he started the work and then just never came back. Her yard looked like a disaster area. The defendant just up and left the job in the middle of the job, so she's suing him here and now for the $800 she paid him. This is the defendant, Charles Chance. He says he was hired to cut down two skinny trees and a monster tree in the plaintiff's yard. He told her it would take about a week, started on the monster tree, and told her he'd have to come back to finish the job. Next thing he knows, she hires someone else to finish the job. Now she wants him to pay her back? <laughs> Hello? Things don't work like that. He's accused of taking too long to chop. All parties, please raise your right hand. Be seated, come to order. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're Deborah welcome. Williams, you are suing Master Touch Lawn and Tree Service of Central Florida, AKA Master Touch and Tree by Lily Chance, represented here by Charles Chance. Who's Lily? My wife. Okay. But she sent you here alone? Well, uh... <laughs> 800, you're suing them for $800 because according to you, they didn't do their job. Tell me what happened. Well, uh, Judge, I hired uh, Charles to come and cut uh, three, two, three of my trees. Okay, I had. how did you hear about him? Well, uh, he was cutting somebody across the street from me. When I come home, I saw that he'd done such a great job. I thought, wow, I could use him to cut my trees down. Okay. So I asked Were you him, trying to remove trees entirely? Well, I, want, I needed one removed, and I needed two to just be trimmed. Okay. But anyway, um, he surveyed the trees. He said that he would start the work, and he would bring a contract, but he would need half the money up front. He charged me $1,600. He would need half up when front. When did you give him the eight? $800. I gave him the $800 on the third. Okay. Did he start the job on the third? He started the job on the third. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. And what did he do on the third? On the third, they started cutting the big tree down, the real big, huge one. And it had long limbs all in my neighbor's yard and everywhere. So they left those limbs in my neighbor's yard and they cut my limbs in my yard and put them up front. So what uh, about the neighbor's yard? The, you, you mean limbs that fell onto your neighbor's yard? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. they, they, they left them there. But anyway, they told me it would take them three days to do the work. So I said, no problem. That's that's not a problem at all. So they uh, well, did you knock on the neighbor's door and say, hey, I'm sorry about the limb. How big was the limb? The limbs were they were long. The one in the they neighbor's yard. I sent pictures. Uh, they well, were can huge. I see the pictures? Oh, uh, yes. These were the limbs for my neighbor's yard. <clears throat> You couldn't print that out in color for me? Uh, they wouldn't. They, they I can didn't barely see color. it. It's like, it's like, where's Waldo? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Those are big limbs. Color. Those are they not are little limbs. Because the tree was big. So wait, the neighbor doesn't come home and say, what the heck? Well, the neighbor asked me, she said, yeah, they cut trees down in my yard. What are they going to do? And I said, well, they're supposed to be coming back. And they're okay. going to get them up for me. All right. So what ends up happening? Well, they never came back. So I started calling Charles. I mean, the next day, the 4th. I called Charles, but he had already gone to my house and talked to my son, told my son he had something to do, you know. So he called me later and said, you know, gave me this long story about everything he had to do. He'll be there on the 5th. On the 5th, no show. So I called him back. And this went on till about the 20th. I mean, he did come back one time on the 12th. He and came back on the, on the 12th because I told him, I said, look, if you're not going to cut the rest of the trees down, don't even worry about it. Just pick up the debris that you left in my yard. I said, even if you can't pick it all up, just pick up a little bit at a time. I'd be happy with that. He came back and picked up about that much. <laughs> and I haven't seen him. Since. Did he go to the neighbor's yard? No. Not at all. Oh, if I was a neighbor, I would sue actually, you. Actually, my neighbor, yeah, no, my neighbor stood a suit. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, but I, <laughs> but actually, but I would be very mad if you had him come back and pick up a little, this well, much in your yard instead God of that I in my yard. Thank God I had neighbors because you know, it's they, killing their lawn, it's killing their, well, they, yeah, it looks like their lawn could use some killing. It was terrible. But, <laughs> the, stuff, the stuff had dried up so bad, it was just flying all in my neighbor's yard and everything, and I just like practically begged him, can all you right, so please? what else, he comes at 12th and then he doesn't come back after he, that, he but are you calling him and what's he saying? Yes, I'm calling him, I'm texting him, I have texts, I have Text. I have a, a message from him uh, where he was told me he was going to get it up. Let me see um, the message. So go ahead and turn your phone back on and let me see the text. Okay. While we're looking at that, tell me your side of this. Um, Deborah called me over and she asked me to take to a do look this at job and you charge her sixteen hundred. You were going to cut the trees. You it's came on the third. Little, you started the job. Why little. didn't you come back? That's what I need to know. Well, one of the reasons I didn't come back is because I told Deborah I had a problems with 
my climbers. So I had to get new your climbers. climbers. Your workers? Yeah, the guys. What that was climbed. the problem that you had with them? Because they wanted too much money. Well, don't you think that's something you should know before you quote the job and, oh, and enter oh. into a contract with her? I mean, this is not something that should be a surprise in the middle of the work. Okay. No, it shouldn't be. And it wasn't. I guess since I'd known Deborah, I saw let Deborah sort of wooze me into way underbidding myself. And I told Deborah, I said, Deborah, I said, you know, I gave you way under what this job is worth. And therefore you're allowed to just come no, do a little no, bit no, no, and no, leave no, degree in no, both no, yards. No, no, I told her, I told her, it's up to you, Your Honor, however you want to judge on no, this. No, I, I want to know what you're you, thinking. But you're not, you're not listening to me. Because I'm at, no, here's what, how it's working. You want to say what you want to say and get out of here, but I want to cross-examine you. Okay. That means I get to ask you questions. Okay. And they're going to make you uncomfortable. Oh, okay. Because they're going to make you look bad. Okay. Because you look bad. And you know what? You, you're so correct about that. That's the reason why I have to let people stop using me for a sucker and trying to be, be the what nice guy. What you wrong? You're not a nice guy. You're a guy who I, came and did the job. I'm a better job. nice guy, Your no, Honor. No, but here's the your thing. Honor, that, no, no, you okay. think it's nice to right. underbid it yeah. and then not do the job. It's not. You complicated no, a life. No, I wasn't going to do the job. I told Deborah. I say, Deborah, I'm going to have to try to come up with more money in order to get your job completed. Because I said, at the end of the day, Deborah, I'm going to be paying to get your job done. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here, by the way. Again, Doug Llewellyn back after 20 years. Back on the People's Court. He'll be here in a minute. Um, how many days do you have to wait for uh, this guy to, who picks up the debris um, not to show up before you hire somebody else and then deduct it from that guy? No more than five business days. Five business days. That's right. The only way, it's not fair. He's already made the investment. Five days is way too much time, but that would be the fair amount. Five days? Seven days. Seven days. Okay. I'm not sure the difference, but okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd say five days. I'd go knock on the door. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, at a point, you're right. It's going to, it's the, your neighbor's going to be pissed off for sure. Going inside the courtroom. Before you agree with her, I'll do the job for 1600 Right. Why haven't you spoken to your climbers to find out what they're going to charge you to see if you can agree to 1600 Because once you agree to 1600 there's two that, things you do. You take her 800 you start the job, and you leave everything lying around. So it's isn't it your fault that you didn't know what your workers were going to charge you? Yes. It's my fault that I didn't know. And So you and, end up and, doing... Really okay, hold on. Pause on one second, and let me ask you, what do you end up doing to clean up the place? Like, what happens? How long are these limbs out there? You better not tell me that this is in your neighbor's yard. That, that's still in my neighbor's yard. Is it still in your neighbor's yard? Okay, yes. you're a terrible neighbor. Well, this is... <laughs> you no, know, seriously, because I know you pay like your son and a friend to clean up your yard. Why didn't you pay them to clean up your neighbor's yard? This is what happened, Your Honor. My neighbors told me, they said, look, you know, the guy looked like it's taking him a long time to come and get your stuff. So don't worry about getting our bark. I want to keep the bark. I, tell him to just take the limbs out of my yard. The guy decided he wanted to keep the bark. So he what said, for? Firewood? I guess. I don't know. He just wanted to keep it. But anyway, he said, tell him just get the limbs out. So I told him. He said, OK, I would do that. They never went to my neighbor's yard. And I know. So what is your neighbor doing? Your neighbor doesn't care anymore? No, he doesn't care anymore. Oh, for the Thank love of God. Thank God. So did you hire somebody else to finish the two trees or you just haven't finished the trees? Well, after I realized Charles just wasn't going to come back and finish the work after talking to him over and over and over again, I had to hire somebody else. I wanted those trees down. I How much did down. you pay the other person to I bring the I paid the other person $2,000. Do you it have was a receipt? A big job. Mm. So what you're suing for is $800. Well, from him, but what about the fact that you have one tree which has been taken down, which is worth something? Because these other guys, if they charge you two thousand for the other two trees, imagine what they would have charged you. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know if I was entitled to anything more. I just. I don't know. There's a couple of different. In the law, there's many ways to figure out damages. One way is what you're doing, which frankly is cheaper for you, which is to say, I want my money back. The other way is to say, hey, I should get the benefit of my bargain. I negotiated a contract for $1,600 and now I had to go out and pay $2,800. So I want the difference between the $1,600 and the $2,800. Um, I do. I know you do. <laughs> I absolutely do. It's not do. what you filed though. Uh, um, so it's just kind of frustrating for her, you know? It's frustrating for her because she thought she'd get a deal done one way and then she didn't. And then, and then what value do you place on having huge limbs all over the yard, her yard and that? Do you have a picture of it on your yard? Yes. Yeah, let me see it. For the number of weeks that she was trying to get you to do the job. This is my yard. Let me see. Two parts on my front yard. 
You two didn't know each other before this, right? Yes, I knew him. I went to school with him. So oh, I thought he would be, you know, a great candidate to do my work. <laughs> wow, you really did underquote this. You know what? I, I learned from this. I take a, a, a lesson from this. And I, that's one reason why I, 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 pay, I play with the uh, fact of getting out the business called good guys end up last. People will take advantage of you every time. And I, I just don't have the heart to be the shark that it takes to go dealing with these people. Your Honor, at my defense, all I ask is that he picked it up. That's all I ask. No, I know. And that's kind of really... Chopping down the street was worth something. Yeah. And not picking up the debris was also worth something on your side. Yeah. Because it's kind of wrong. Mm -hmm. So I think what I'm going to do is order him to return a portion of it back, not the whole thing. Okay. Because that was a really big tree. <laughs> All right. I'm going to order the defendant to pay the plaintiff $300. That's my verdict. Good luck, folks. So the plaintiff gets $300 back in this case, not what she was originally seeking. Mr. Chance, I feel sorry for you because you seem like a good guy. And here you're saying to the judge, good guys finish last. And you really, you know, you let her woo you into underbidding. I think you probably learned a lot from uh, this whole experience, right? Yes, I learned a whole lot from it. And the thing about it, I'm going to either do better or get out of this business. Because I don't have a heart to be the sh it, it takes a hard-hearted person to deal with these people. Because everybody out to, to woo you down. And I <laughs> fall for too much. You fall and for it's, too much. It's, 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 taking me, it's taking me way down. Thank you very much, sir. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Now here comes the plaintiff, Ms. Williams. Man, this this great story. What about your neighbors? I feel sorry for them. They're not upset yet, huh? Well, they 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 decided to just keep the bark. For whatever reason, he wanted to go ahead and keep the bark. All right. You know, and they just wanted him to cut it up, and he wouldn't even do that. <laughs> you satisfied with the verdict? No, I'm not. I wish I had got my whole monies back. But, you know, hey, it, it happened, you know. And, uh, you know, you can't woo anybody into anything. I mean, he gave me a price. I <laughs> okay. gave him what he asked for, so. He thinks you did. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh -huh. You have to sign some documents. Harvey? Okay, Doug, uh, there are magic words, and the magic words are called time is of the essence. And that means if you write that down in every contract where time really is important, legally that makes a difference to a judge. It means you're serious about that date, meaning that date. It has to be performed.